Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Wingo World. I am your host, Dale Wingo, and I am in Kodiak, Alaska. Currently, right now, I am at the Best Western Kodiak Inn, uh, probably a block away from my uh, bunkhouse. And um, I had to get some paperwork done for back home, and I have six roommates, so I checked into a hotel so I can concentrate on what I have to do and... Um, get it done and, and focus on the paperwork and stuff so <clears throat> and I I have six roommates I think I mentioned that anyway um so I haven't talked to you guys in a while I've been uh working non-stop we the the last day I had off was February 16th it is now March 15th so <laughs> non-stop 12 hour days every day for the last month or so um, so I was hoping to do a video on my next day off, um, but I'm not really sure when that's going to be. So, uh, since I took the time to, um, check into a hotel to handle my business, this is now part of my business. So, um, I'm talking to you guys. Sorry it's been so long, but I wanted to talk to you today about, uh, what I do or what I've been doing or what you might be doing if you decide to do this. Um, one thing this company told us on in orientation is you're not going to be assigned to any one pro, uh, department or project or anything. You will go where needed when you're needed. So if you're a, a case up guy and I, I'm going to sometimes I may go into lingo where without explaining what the lingo is, but if you were a case up guy, and they need you on the fillet line, then they're gonna put you on the fillet line. You're not gonna stay in case up for that day though. You're gonna fill holes throughout. So that type of thing. So I've been doing different things uh, each day or each week I've been doing something different. So, which is cool. You get to see the operation, uh, the machinations of it all. When I first got started, I started doing racking, which is basically you put the product on a sheet rack on a sheet of uh, plastic, put it on the rack, and the freezer guy takes it to the freezer. So it could be frozen and broken up and sent to the, the buyer. So we were racking what's called row, which is basically fish egg or fish egg sacks. So we're putting row on sheets, on sheets of plastic, hard plastic, and put the plastic on the metal racks and send the metal racks to the freezer. So that's what I started doing. Then I went over to, um, the actual um, everything when you when you go there everything's like a conveyor belt or an assembly line. Think of a Ford Motor Company that processes fish. So there's assembly lines or or conveyor belts or roller racks everywhere. And there's always a line of people and something's coming down. And whatever your specific job is, that's what you're doing. If you're sorting, you're picking, you're pulling, whatever. So there's a bunch of small little assembly lines. And even if there is no conveyor belt you're making an assembly line with you and three or four or five or six or eight or ten other people and as the product comes down the line you do what you have to do and it keeps going further so after I started racking then I put me on uh, this one line where you remove the row from the, the conveyor belt so this machine comes in and rolls and dumps the row and all the other fish guts onto the conveyor belt the conveyor belt comes down and you either remove the row or remove everything except the row. So the row can go to the people who pull the row and put it aside. And then they bring it, once they put it aside, they bring it over to the rackers, which was what I was doing. So after I started racking, I learned to go to the conveyor belts where the row was coming. I removed everything except the row so the people can, can extract the row and bring it to us. So it's kind of going backwards, but that's another job I did. Um, a third job that I've done, that I've been doing is, um, they have what these, what they're called H and G machines, H and G, which is head and gutters, which you bring the fish into a giant bin. The bin is like, it looks like the back of a trash truck. It's a big baler that dumps into a, a chute, if you will. And all the fish go down one by one into this machine. And there's, once it dumps into the chute, there's a feeder guy who puts it in place 
and the fish go through the machine and get beheaded. Now, <laughs> they're already dead, so don't get upset. So when the, fork, the, the forklift operator brings the bin into the baler, um, there's a guy who lifts the, lift the arm, the baler dumps, and then you push all the fish towards the feeder guy or his feeder. So the feeder guy has a feeder to straighten out the fish so the feeder guy can just pull and push, pull and push. So I've been two of those positions. The baler guy who controls the baler and then pushes the fish with a giant pull towards the feeder's assistant. I've been the feeder's assistant where I straighten out the fish where the guy can just grab the fish by the gills and, and put him in the spot to get his head lopped off in the machine. And But I haven't been the actual feeder guy. But once the guy feeds the fish into the machine, the fish come up beheaded. And there's two other guys who uh, rip the rest of its guts out. Don't get offended. <laughs> don't get upset. This is, listen, you don't always want to know how the sausage is made. And I thought the same thing. I said, listen, I may never eat fish again. But I love fish. And this is just how the sausage is made. This is what happens. So, so once the fish come up beheaded, Somebody sticks their hand in there and rips the guts out. <laughs> I know. And then passes it along. I haven't seen what happens after that part, but at the end of it, it comes out as a filet. So I haven't done the rip the, head, rip the guts out part yet, but I've just been feeding the feeder who feeds, feeding the assistant who feeds the feeder, and the feeder puts in the machine, comes out headless, two guys rip their guts out, put it back in the machine, and then at the end of the machine, it comes out as a filet, a raw filet. So it goes into these big bins. Now the filets come down the line right after that. And there's people picking out any imperfections, like if there's bone, there's skin or whatever. They pick it out and they send it at the end of the line. Those filets have to be racked. I've also done that part, the racking of the filets, just like the row. You put the, the fillets on a plastic tray. You put the trays in the, free, uh, in the rack. The guy puts them in the freezer so they can be sent to your case up. He breaks it up, puts it in case, takes it to shipping. So I've done that. Um, what else? It's, it's, it's interesting and it's just interesting. Um, now they have me on um, this assembly line, this this uh, production line where um, the fish come out. Those were uh, those were a different type of fish, though, where it cuts its head off and the fillets and all that. Those were cod, gray cod that we we're working on. But the pollock we're working on, they also have me on that line where it goes through a head and guts machine, an H and G machine, right? Cuts the head off. But it doesn't fillet it. It just cuts its head off. It doesn't fillet it. And then the people are on the on the, the line, the convention uh, the the conveyor belt, and they're sorting. So it's a sort line where they're throwing different sizes of fish at you. So whatever size you're responsible for is coming to you, and you have to put these in metal pans. And it comes quick. The fish are coming down. There's two guys up top putting the fish in the H and G machine. The fish pop up headless. They come down, and there's people throwing it at you down your chute right into your basket, and you have to fill the metal plate from the basket and slide it to the weight, the scales, the weighers. So there's a big bin of fish. It goes into the head and guts machine, head and gutter. It comes out headless and gutless. It comes down and there's two or three people that throw the fish down to you and one other person based on, and two other people based on its size, five to seven inches, three to five inches, that type of thing, or five to seven pounds, three to five pounds, that type of thing, right? So once you get that, you have to fill up the, the tray, you slide it on a conveyor belt or a roller rack. A person at a weigh scale picks up the tray, weighs it, makes sure it's a certain weight. Once they do, they wrap it up, they send it down. It goes down a, a little roller rack into what's called case up. Now, I haven't done case up. Case up's probably one of the harder jobs, which doing this 
the sort where they're sorting it by size and they're throwing the fish at you, that's kind of hard. That can get hard because it goes fast and fish are just flying at you and you're getting fish water all over your face. You're getting scales like I got hoodies with scales covering the hood and you end up with your face and so every once in a while water hits you in the, in the lips. You're like, Pup, but you got a mask on. Oh yeah, you probably should wear a mask. If you have facial hair, you're required to wear a mask or a net. If you don't have facial hair, you're good. You can go without it, but I would still wear a mask because you're getting splashed in the face with fish stuff. So keep that in mind. So yeah, you got to be quick. It comes quick and you can get overwhelmed easily. You stop for a second, you'll have like 20 or 30 fish in front of you and you can only fit like 12 or 15 in a case or whatever based on its weight. So you're putting fish in there, you slide. Then you're putting more fish in there, you slide. You grab grab the metal pan, you put fish in there, you slide. So that sort's kind of crazy. That gets a little wild. And that's where I am now working on. Um, and my hand is swollen, my fingers are numb, uh, my knee's swollen. So I'm pretty beat up. Um... Where else did they have me working? Um, I don't know. It's been a long three or four weeks. It really has. Um, but it's, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it. It's just like any other job. You wake up and you're like, this is horrible. And I'm not going, I'm calling out sick, but I haven't missed a day yet. And hopefully, <laughs> hopefully someday in the near future, we will have a day off which is what I'm looking for. Oh, yeah, I forgot the last job I did. Um, we're in the middle of pollock season, and we've also caught uh, brought in some gray cod, which are pretty big fish. They're like 50 pounds or something like that. They can get up to 50 pounds that we had. But last week, some of the fishermen brought in schools, like millions of pounds of squid. So... We were like, all right, since they're caught up in the catch, we'll take them. So we took all the squid. So uh, a forklift would come and dump a vat of squid into a giant tub. Two people would take a plastic trays and dig out the squid, put it in the metal trays, slide the metal tray to me, and I put it on a scale. When it reaches a certain amount, if it's not enough, I pick up some squid and I put it in there. Or if it's too much, I take some squid out. And then I slide it down. Somebody wraps up the squid. And someone else puts the tray, the tray squid onto a pallet. I did that. And that was not fun because one time I grabbed the squid by its eyeball and black squid juice hit me in, in the face. So <coughs> I'm all right. That's why I renamed that job last, because I tried to forget about it. <clears throat> but that was a fun, fun few days. Somebody else does that job now. Yeah, loads of fun. So, um, yeah, that's another job. But yet, yeah, you're not going to get to choose where you go. You go where you need it. And you may not stay in that department very long. They're going to spread you around. This particular company. Some companies, you're at where you're at, and that's it. Here, you go where you're needed at whatever current time. Um, I know people ask, what company is it? What company is it? What company is it? I'm not going to name the company. I'm not going to confirm or deny the company because I don't know if they have a social media policy or an anti-social media policy for that matter. So... I won't say anything about the company, but it's not that hard to find out who I work for. You could just check some parts of social media somewhere and you'll see the name. But um, I appreciate you leaving that private. So if there is a policy that I don't know about, I don't get in trouble. Otherwise, I can't bring you the videos, man. Come on. Is it that important? So listen, I'm going to spend the next week or so uh, trying to answer some questions. Now you know what it's like. You punch in around 545. A.M., you punch out around 5.45 p.m., you have a half-hour break of lunch, which is unpaid, but you have two 15-minute breaks that are paid, and <clears throat> 12 hours a day, seven days a week, the checks are lovely. Um, you want to know what I made or what I make or my prognostications on future income, check out the next video I'll be doing. 
coming up sometime this week, either today, tomorrow, or sometime this week, I promise, because people have been asking questions, and I don't normally talk about money, but it's only fair to let you know what you can make, even though you can do the math yourself. It's only fair to let you know what you can make and what I have made, because people need to know that it's real. You can say, oh, this, that, this, that, but people need to know. I'm not going to show you my pay, but I will tell you, and whether you choose to believe me or not, do the math, and I can show you the bumps and bruises <laughs> to go with it. All right, sorry I was away for so long. We're on day 28, 23, 25, I don't know. We've been working for almost 27, 26, 25 days straight, and I'm tired. But I promise I'll be back soon. So keep watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you know and hit uh, hit subscribe button so you know when uh, my next video pops up and you will be informed. The next one will be about money, dollars and cents. All right. This is Dale babbling relentlessly from Wingo World, Kodiak, Alaska. I'll talk to you later. Get some sleep. Peace.